Today is World Hemophilia Day, and Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall, the Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer, is back to help explain this rare blood disorder. Welcome back. Thank you. Always great to be here. You know, um, how many people here have ever had a small cut? Raise your hand. Okay, that's almost everybody. So as you know, people who get a small cut end up having bleeding, but only for a short period of time. And that's because your blood contains proteins called clotting factors. These clotting factors, along with platelets, help your blood to clot quickly. People with hemophilia, on the other hand, don't have enough of one of the clotting factors. And as a result of that, their blood doesn't clot as quickly. It won't bleed faster than normal, necessarily, but it will bleed longer. When this becomes a really big problem is if, for instance, something like a head injury, that can cause bleeding into the brain. Other injuries that can be really difficult are injuries into deep muscles or joints. And depending upon where they bleed, this can be painful, in some cases, sadly, even life-threatening. With severe hemophilia, bleeding can even occur without an obvious injury. But this isn't true for everyone because there are so many different degrees of this illness. Those with moderate hemophilia may bleed for a long time after surgery, a bad injury, or even dental work, but they'll rarely experience spontaneous bleeding, while those with mild hemophilia may not bleed often and may never have a major bleeding problem. Our next guest got her start in show business appearing on Mad TV. She also co-starred in the movie Ted. However, she's best known as the voice of Lois Griffin on the TV show Family Guy. She's here to share her experience with this illness Please welcome actress, writer, and comedian Alex Borstein to the show. I got hugged by a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> You're here to talk about hemophilia because it's touched your life in a very personal way. I'm what you call a low factor level carrier, so I have had a lot of symptoms. Um, you know, for ladies, what that would mean is, you know, once a month it's a little bit like Shark Week for me. Um, <laughs> other than that, other than that, I haven't, I've been fortunate. I haven't dealt with any other issues. And now that my daughter is affected with this, um, it's kind of made me and my brother, who's a hemophiliac, that much closer, who's actually here with us today. Um, right there. Your brother Evan. Hi, Hi Evan. So many of the people who are affected by this disease are men, many, many more men uh, than women, but we shouldn't forget how important it is uh, for women who have the illness. And that's primarily, though, because of the way that this disease is inherited in families. And as it turns out, um, this disease can also occur spontaneously in families, so with no family history. Um, and these spontaneous genetic mutations can lead to hemophilia. And then last but not least, people can get hemophilia as a result of autoimmunity if your body attacks, if you would, those clotting factors. But we really want to hear uh, from you, Evan. I was diagnosed at a very early age, at eight days old, when I had my circumcision. I was uh, <laughs> brought up with vigilant parents, and they informed the schools and the teachers, so they were all hyper aware of my hemophilia. And in the event that I developed a bruise or a welt, I was immediately taken to the emergency room and administered care for the treatment of my hemophilia. Blood transfusions have been a mainstay, an important part of treatment of hemophilia for, for many, many years. Unfortunately, in the 1980s, many people were infected with the HIV virus through blood transfusions, and thousands of people died. But what's happened since then is that the U.S. blood supply is much, much safer, and there have been many scientific advances in treatment since then. Now I am 44 years old. I am healthy. I am very happy. And most thankfully, I am HIV-free. I heard that this illness in some ways even inspired your career. When we would be waiting in hospital waiting rooms to find out what was happening with him from a head injury, I became the comic relief. It kind of shaped who I am, my role in being able to laugh about things and create um, something positive out of something negative. Through your commitment to awareness and the 
commitment of scientists around the world, even though we don't have a cure yet, there have been treatment advances, and there's work that's going on right now. There are clinical trials ongoing. If you want more information on hemophilia, you can get it on gethealthystayhealthy.com. And before we go, any cool projects? Yes, um, of course, I'm still on Family Guy. <laughs> and I'm doing a new show for HBO called Getting On. Oh, and oh, how fun. Yeah, it's great. And we actually, I play a nurse, which is fun. So. We are excited to check that out. Yeah, Alex. season two will be on in the fall on HBO. Thanks for being here, Evan. Thank this you as well, Dr. Thank you, Thank you. We'll be right back.